Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can design this kind of logo from sketch to vector, how I made the sketch, how I made it vectored really easily inside of Adobe Illustrator. This video is brought to you by logodesign.net. Logo design isn't just about creating cool shapes, it's actually creating something that's simple that identifies a brand so it gives you that feeling towards that company now today this logo or the brief should i say that i'm going on is a computer cleanup software something that you can use to download clean up your mac or your pc very easily i wanted this logo to signify it being strong i also wanted to signify it being clean and modern so what i've come up with is this drawing so like in any sort of design work you always start off in drawing as this will give you the creative freedom but also the limitation to create very simple shapes and that's what all we're doing this one is a simple as drawing you could think of in the world it is literally a square with some light doesn't look too impressive as a drawing but as you start to understand logo design and as you start to understand where you go with these concepts and ideas you'll start to see the potential in something like this so all i've done is i've created this drawing on the ipad and i brought it in to illustrate by just dragging it in and we've gone ahead and cropped it down just so it doesn't take up the whole canvas the first thing i'm going to do is change the opacity because we're going to trace over this now you don't have to trace over it but this is what we're going to do today so if you're a beginner this is the best way of doing it draw sketch bring it in and then play i'm going to highlight the sketch i'm going to press command 2 and as you'll see the sort of bounding box disappears and i can't go ahead and do anything and basically what this does is it takes the object, the shape, the picture, anything that you've highlighted inside of Illustrator, and it will lock it on that specific level. So you can see if I go to my layer panel, that is locked, unlocked. So now this is acting like tracing paper. So when I click on it, it's not going to do anything. I'm not going to move it around. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my color to black. I'm going to switch my fill to a stroke. And we can do this over here by pressing this button or pressing shift and X. Logo design is all about geometry. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a square. So I could draw like a perfectly geometric square if I wanted to and just put it over the top. You can see that line is way too thin. I'm going to quickly go ahead and bump this line work up just by clicking like a mad thing to something like here. Now, as you can see, if I just move this to the left, we've got a stroke. So this can be changed in thickness. We're not using actual squares and cutting things out because we want to keep all the aspects of this consistent. And this is the easiest way of doing it. Now, you can see this has got like a square and a circle. Perfect shape for a logo as it's easy to see, easy to draw, easy to remember and very scalable. All we need to do is increase the shape. So I'm going to select it with my selection tool and I'm going to drag down like so. Obviously, we don't have the rounded corners at the bottom, but the great thing about Illustrator is that we get these little dots on the side of our anchor points. When you see these dots, it allows you to round the corners of the shape really easily. This used to have to be done with an effect where you would have to go to effect and then go around here and just find round corners. It doesn't work very well. So what I want to do is instead of rounding the whole thing, I want to round just the bottom one. So I'm going to go to my direct selection tool by pressing A, and then I'm going to select both of these two anchor points. And then I'm going to use the corner tool to get a perfect circle till I get that red line. Now that I've got that red line, I've got my border there. You can start to see that this is really taking shape. Now the hard bit comes here because what I've actually tried to do here is create a square with these lines seems easy to do but it can be a bit tricky when you try to replicate it perfectly inside of illustrator so all we're going to do is we're going to create another square here and i'm going to just make it into a fill as to not wreck the stroking area and this is a perfect square so when i brought it out i held shift i'm going to go ahead and press shift x again and that's going to make it into a stroke now the only problem is it's not the same thickness but that doesn't matter this is just going to be our baseline of where we want the lines to be i'm going to increase this ever so slightly as well because we can always edit this later now what i want to do is use the same stroke width as this to create these lines and there's so many different ways inside of illustrator and other apps like vectinator as well to do this but what i'm going to do is do the easiest way for me which is to get my line tool here and i'm going to bring down a line holding shift at this angle there 
holding shift will bring it down to that 45 degree snapped angle. And then I'm going to go ahead and just scale it up. And you might think, why are you scaling it up so much? Well, in order to get it perfect, there's a few things we need to do. Once I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and hold shift, alt, and I'm going to drag. And that's going to copy it or duplicate that shape at a 45 degree angle again. And that's what we want. We're going to duplicate it to about here. Then instead of having to do this over and over again, I'm going to press command D and do that twice. So it gives us this sort of like perfect spaced out line repetition. So now that we've got these lines in the perfect order, they're, they're going to be a bit too thick because I want them to intersect and have more lines somewhere else. So I'm going to cut these out and it takes a bit of time to get this correct. But I want to make sure these lines are working pretty well and I want a few of them. I'm going to highlight them and make sure these two endpoints look relatively similar. Highlight everything else, then deselect the outside shape, press Shift and M, and we're going to hold Alt with the Shape Builder tool to get rid of the lines that we do not need on the outside. So I start off with the big thick lines first. We're going to cut this there because it didn't particularly work correctly. Highlight it all again. And it's just the process of manipulating and taking away these shapes here. So now we have like a square shape in the middle there with these lines. They are thinner than the outside lines, but that's okay because we're clumping a lot of lines together. What we need to do now is for free, duplicate it by going ahead and pressing shift alt and dragging and that will duplicate to the left we do this just so we don't mess up the first one we always want to have something to come back to and also something to compare it to now obviously the only problem here is that everything seems a bit boring it seems very very jagged now what i want to do is go through basically an inspiration spike like big sir and round some stuff off so the first thing we could do is round these you might think how do i round them maybe you could expand them or make them into an actual shape well instead of doing that what we're going to do is select all these lines we're going to go up to stroke up here press stroke and we can choose the caps and we're going to choose round caps this will give us a round corner on the caps of them there now the other thing that we have here is these two top points they are very sharp we don't want them to be that sharp we want to blunt them down just ever so slightly so we're going to highlight with the direct selection tool again just these two points at the top and we're going to go to these circles drag them in until we get something like this now we have our shape what we want to do now is not mess around with it too much we want to go ahead group this shape by pressing command g and selecting all of it duplicate it we're going to create a new artboard just to the left very quickly we're going to move this duplicate over there now i don't want this to be changing every time i scale it there's a few ways you can stop this from happening. You can go to Command K or Control K and then press Scale, Stroke and Effects. We don't want to do that because we like to keep things consistent when we scale. So instead of doing that, we have duplicated it and we're going to highlight it, head up to Object, go down to Path and then Outline Stroke. And you'll see instantaneously these have turned into real shapes. So now we can feel free to scale them and transform them any way we want without changing the line weight. The next thing I need to do is add the typographic logo into it because this is an icon. No one really knows what this is about until you tell them. So we need to name the logo basically or name the company. So what I'm going to do is very quickly type in ProClean, which is the name of the company. Choosing the correct font or typeface with this is hugely important. We know it's a clean and modern logo, so we're going to choose a clean and modern typeface. So what I'm going to choose is Montserrat, because that's a good one to have. So I'm just going to find it and then choose the bold version. If you've ever been stuck in the position of your logo type not looking well with the icon, that's because the line weight or the weight of the type isn't matching closely enough to the line weight of the icon. So it's a huge part. So what we're doing now is we'll be scaling this down until it fits the kind of line weight that we need in overall size to ProClean. Now there's so many ways we can actually compose this and we're not even worried about colors yet. We can go ahead and bring it up to the top left. We can duplicate this down, move this to the right, bring this further down. We can have ProClean looking like this. Now what I want to do is just stick with this top one for now. I'm going to duplicate this again because we want to try some colors. Now this is a modern logo. So what I want to do is 
create some popping colors. This can be done with gradients if you want, but you've got to be very subtle with these. You don't want to be too cringe worthy with them. It could be just like an electric blue, a simple blue and a simple gray that you can use. But because it's a product that people will be using for their computers and by their computers, I want to get that modern vibe. So I'm going to go and create a gradient really quick, a very subtle one. We're going to go to window. We're going to go down to gradient and we'll get this little box here. Press the gradient button whilst it's selected. We're going to start dragging in two colors. We're going to drag in a pink and a purple. And we're going to drag this to the top down to the bottom. For the type, we want to actually create a clean look. So we don't want it to be black. If we create this type to be too dark, it will contrast too much with the icon. So we actually want to desaturate this. And the easiest way is to choose a nice clean gray. To see if this logo works on an off-white bounding box, we can do some testing. We can highlight the whole thing scale it down we're going to create another box around this just a really sh strange looking box create an off-white color just with the color swatches bring that further in maybe even change the off-white ever so slightly to come further up and that to me looks pretty clean and nice I just want to thank the sponsor of this video, logodesign.net. If you are someone who's wanting to learn more about logo design, see written tutorials and see more about what I've done here in more detail, then go ahead and click the link down below in the description. They've got so many resources for you to read, view and look at on their website. I've done many tutorials sponsored by logodesign.net. So if you're someone who's new getting into the field, then go ahead and press the link down below in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on post notifications so you never miss a video like this. YouTube doesn't always tell you when I've posted a video. So to save you from searching, press that notification bell, turning all notifications on and switching it on on your phone so you know when I've uploaded a video. I'll be looking forward to you guys in the comments. What word should I give you for this video? If you watch to the end of this video, Comment the word melon. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Goodbye.